You heard from Daquan Finn as we welcome in Mike Robinson. And Mike, Rob, thank you for joining us here on College Football Weekly. Hey, thanks for having me. I can't believe college football is here already. A lot of enthusiasm for this Rocket program this season because of Daquan Finn. There's no questions this year. He is the starting quarterback. He went to the Manning Passing Academy over the summer. He has made some strides going forward. He is the unquestioned leader of this offense. You know, and some would say he was that same guy last year as well, you know, but now he's just a year better and a year more experienced. You know, he had to get his teeth cut having two quarterback system. One thing that I really liked about that was he was able to fight and compete for the job. Now this year, he can sit back and be the man, but he's going to be there without some weapons. Exactly. They do lose quite a bit from the offensive skill position, starting with Brian Kobach. So who is going to be there to help Daquan Finn offensively? I mean, you hope somebody's there. No, I'm kidding. No, you're going to have a lot of guys. Micah Kelly is somebody that's going to have a huge year here in the backfield. And you also got Stewart and also the transfer and Penny Boone. But the loss of Landers, the loss of Winstead, you know, and obviously, you know, losing big guys like Bryce Mitchell and Denzel McKinley-Lewis outside, these guys are going to have to figure it out. Jerron Newton's another guy who had a spectacular year a couple of years, seasons back, I believe his rookie year yeah. over here at uh, UT. But one thing that's going to be cool is to see if, uh, Thomas Zyros can get going. You know, you got guys like Adam Bill deep uh, buried down in that roster. Will he be able to submit himself up to the front? But you also got Demir Blankumsey, who is a premier guy on the outside. He can get some speed going for this Rockets team. Another loss on offense happened just a few weeks ago. Two big losses on that offensive line as Mitch Berg and Tyler Long, a couple of local products, are both out for the season. Uh, Long's out for the season. Berg's going to miss at least the first half of the season with injuries. So all of a sudden, an offensive line that you thought was going to be a strength, now you're going to have some unproven guys in that line. And you know, and that's just kind of like the, the whole idea of the Toledo football team in the past couple of years. You know, they've played shuffleboard on the offensive line year after year, week after week. Almost all of these guys on this team have have played different positions. I'm sorry, on that on that offensive unit, have played different positions. Went from center. You even got Devin Rogers moving from the defensive line to being the backup center. So a lot of things are happening. But I do think Mike Hallett and this company is going to do a really good job of having them prepare, especially with the softer first two games. Other side of the ball, we can talk all we want about how the offense might struggle because of what we just discussed. The defense is going to carry this team this year. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, defense wins championships, and, and this defense was the best in the MAC. I mean, they were one of the top defenses in the country. You know, you bring in back, you know, some of the, the best pass rushers in the game, Deswan Johnson, Terrence Taylor, another guy you want to see, Hines. Oh, you you got to mention Hines, right? But also Kevon Butler. I mean, up front, they are nasty, and they're as good as they were a few years back when they had all those NFL guys like Ola and Tuzar Skipper there. So this is a defense to be seen. Dallas Gant and company there in that linebacker union with Dan Bolton, Bolton missed all last year having him back is really going to uh, you know bring that depth to that linebacker room and also Johnson and Burrow so many guys back there but the key to it is how does secondary play can yeah. Bauer and can Max and Hook Kenyon Mitchell and the rest of those guys really keep it together and do they have the depth to go to distance yeah because obviously you lose Tyson Anderson yes. and Sam Womack from that secondary they're both in the NFL now but having that strong front seven mm -hmm. that can help out a secondary that's kind of finding its footing if you get pressure on the quarterback that's going to help out the back four a lot. Now, those guys are still good. You know, those back <laughs> four guys are still really good football players, and that front seven is extremely good. And they got the depth to be very special up front. So this year, you expect them to play in the backfield. You might have to see, a, you know, play a little bit more discipline because that's going to be the key is can they minimize those penalties and really get after the quarterback because everybody's going to try to slow them down with screen pays, plays or try to run at them because that is a pass rush no one wants to see. The so-called experts are saying Toledo is a 44-some point favorite over Long Island. So what can we take out of this Thursday night opener? I mean, it's a litmus test. I mean, we got to find out, are the Rockets as good as they are? And they should be able to come out and dominate this team. I mean, there should be no questions that they will have some struggles early in this game. But as it goes, looking at the roster, looking at the depth, and looking at the talent, Toledo's miles above this team. Obviously, you don't know what they're going to come out in. New coach, new system. But talent-wise, Toledo should come out here and handle their business. All right, thank you very much, Mike Robinson. He'll handle his business every Rocket game day. He'll be on this little Rocket Radio Network as the sideline reporter. Mike Rob, thank you very much. Thanks for having me.